Microphone check two one two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's the Bearded Man podcast with your favorite, the world's favorite bearded man, Bob Bay. Episode thirty three. Larry Bird episode. We out you in the building. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? October fifth, right now, three thirty p.m. Luckily, had the day off today, so I feel good cooking up. Right around this time, just had a nice cup of coffee, got the blood flowing, coming off an excellent, excellent, excellent weekend, and I feel so good to be uh, here with you guys and gals today for this podcast. So, I'm going to be honest with you peeps, my bearded man community, whoever you are, 75 days of drinking, no booze, straight, we broke the streak this weekend, I know, I know, I know, you're all so disappointed in me, I'm sorry. I am sorry from the bottom of my bearded man heart. I broke the streak. I was I was shooting for a hundred. I was seventy five days strong, seventy five percent of the way there. And I had some family that I went to visit down in Newport Beach, California, about fifty minutes south on the four hundred five, and I caved. It was too good of an opportunity this weekend to give myself a little weekend pass to have some fun with cousins. So I sent it, I had no regrets, and so I need to be honest with you guys and gals because we broke the streak of 75 days. The good news is we're back for the fourth quarter starting today. We're going to finish off the 25 days to go for the 100, and we'll wrap up at 100 days of no booze within a 103-day time period. I still think it's incredible. I think 75 is patting on my back. You know what I'm saying? We did it. And I'm excited to finish off 25 days strong. There will be no hiccups. There will be no more excuses. But I think it was a great little weekend pass that I gave to myself. And it was incredible. It was down in Newport Beach. Also Huntington Beach. Laguna. What an incredible, beautiful part of SoCal that I have not had a chance to see. Been out here for three years. This is only about 50 minutes, 60 minutes south of me. And it feels like a different world. It feels, it felt so calm and so amazing and relaxing. I also got to see some Hoberts that also live down in Laguna that have been out here for 30 plus years, maybe 40. And I just have never had a chance to connect with them. They're, I'm telling you, my family is massive. And so I had a chance to meet some of them this weekend, which was just incredible. And it feels good. Constant reminder of how grateful I am to be here, ladies and gentlemen. Dream to living here since I was in fifth grade, three years in, still feel like I'm just getting warmed up in LA and SoCal, and uh, just an incredible weekend getting after it. We we sent it, <laughs> a lot of wine, a lot of brews, a lot of white claws, a lot of bad decisions, a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, vodka sodas, but like I said, there's no regrets, and it's like anything else in life, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? A little beard wisdom for you right here. You pick up where you left off, okay? 75 days strong. We skipped a couple. We went on a little hiatus. And now we're back for the fourth quarter, baby. Let's go. On top of this incredible weekend, uh, today, Monday, October 5th, we just dropped in, uh, an awesome podcast with my man, Huey Mack. Give it up for Huey Mack, recording artist, um, and somebody that I podcasted with way back in January of 2017. And this was somebody that I literally watched in the blog era of music back in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, around that era. And so to know Huey, Joey, on a personal level and as a friend, it was incredible to reconnect with him on a podcast and just catch up on what the last couple of years has been like. And also it was just really interesting too as Joey was somebody that pretty much gave me a place to stay every time I'd visited LA before moving out here uh, in 2017 just kind of lost connection and touch with him and some uh, some of other mutual friends. And there was no reason for either. It, it, it's just, it wasn't uh, because we didn't like each other. It wasn't because there was drama. It's just uh, an example of what happens when you are investing in yourself. Both of us, you know, doing our thing, trying to make shit happen. And, uh, you know, one year passes, two years passes. And so... Definitely been putting a lot more effort and energy into rekindling that relationship because I 
I like Joey and I like the people he's around and I, I, he's all but nothing but good vibes. But I was really happy with this podcast and I think we touched on a lot. And so anybody that is familiar with Huey Mack or you have no idea who he is, I really suggest you go back and listen to episode 32 because it's a gr- an incredible podcast. And I think you guys and gals will enjoy it. So that is enough on the housekeeping. I know you guys and gals thoroughly, thoroughly love that part of the podcast but let's get into today's program and shall we today's topic how to use social media to our advantage and how to not let it take over our lives okay we're gonna dive into the social media world and how we can utilize this tool to our advantage and and I will give plenty of examples of how I use this tool to my advantage and how it got me to where I am today but we also need to keep in mind and be aware of not letting it take over our lives Because it can, and I've seen it, not personally happen for other people, but I've seen slash heard of social media becoming literally like an addiction for other people. And I feel very lucky that I'm so aware and in tune of how much I'm consuming or, um, you know, I will self-correct myself if I see that I'm going off the, the path and I'm consuming too much, but... I'm really excited to dive into today's podcast. Uh, friendly reminder as we go through today's podcast, if you are enjoying this at all, this project at all, all that I ask is you screenshot this episode, post it to your Instagram story, tag me at Bob A, B O, three Bs, four A's, and a Y, and that's how we grow this podcast organically. Once again, if at any moment in time you enjoy this podcast for just two seconds, if you have already enjoyed two seconds of your life right now, screenshot this episode. Post it to your IG story. Tag the bearded man at Bob A B O three B's four A's and a Y, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Make sure you tell your friends why you like this podcast. Thank you very much. Okay, so how did I get inspired to want to talk about social media today? That's what you guys are all asking. Um, I heard recently on a Joe Rogan podcast he talked about the social dilemma documentary on Netflix. And of course, if the, the goat Rogan is talking about it, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to check this out. So while I was down in, in Newport Beach this weekend, my cousin Connor Hobart, some know him as Con Daddy Hobart, the Bud Light King, um, we dove into it. We dove into it and I'm extremely excited that we did. I highly suggest any of you that have not seen it, please go watch it at some point. Very eye-opening uh, and Really just interesting on kind of the direction of where we're going with technology and social media and how powerful it has become. A lot of us don't realize the amount of data that is being collected behind the scenes and it can work to its advantage and it also can hurt. And that's why your phone, you know, just knows so much about you that it makes suggestions and you're like, oh, how did you know that? Or like when I park my car and I don't have to tell my phone and I walk away and I forget where I parked it, I pull up my maps app and I see where I parked my car. So there's there's pros where it's doing things behind the scenes and it's helping our lives. And then there's cons where in the documentary they dive into how it is psychologically changing human beings and how technology is just rapidly changing so quickly, but yet humans and our brains do not change like that. So I highly suggest checking it out. It's really good. And it's very very interesting to think about where technology will be in the next 10, 20 years, because even in the last decade, it has completely transformed and it's been incredibly helpful for me. And so we're going to dive into it. You ready? You ready? Uh, you ready? So truth of the matter, I'm going to be real honest up front. There's no chance I would be where I am today had it not been for platforms like Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all these podcasting you know, platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, podcast app, all of it. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for these platforms. Couple of reasons why. It provided me a place to create my own brand and distribute content for free. So all this content that I've, you know, podcast for example, I pay I think 30 bucks a month to pretty much upload as much as I do, which ends up being uh, if I had a ballpark guess, like 12 hours of podcasting content a month, it's a lot of content for 30 bucks. Sign me up. That's a bargain. Um, so 
I've been able to create my own brand and share my own voice through these platforms for free. Instagram doesn't charge anything monthly. YouTube doesn't. There's obviously, um, I think behind the scenes, you can pay for services that maybe give you more tools or things to work with. But at at the very, very basic level, anybody in this world that wants to start a podcast, create content, build their their own personal brand, aside from the actual production of content, it's free, which is an incredible deal because- it, it's just literally free. It's like literally running your own network of TV, but in 2020. So when I was going to watch an MTV, that's the way I've always looked at my content. I am the Bearded Man channel or the Bob A or the Bobby Hobart, whatever. That's my network. All this social media stuff at its core is me. And then there's obviously so many different layers underneath it. There's YouTube stuff. There's the uh, different variations of podcasting. And then there's the Instagram content. So there's many layers to it. Um, secondly, platforms like this have allowed me to network and meet people from all around the globe through Instagram DM. I've connected with people all over the world. I've also been able to meet people in LA just through sliding into DMS and reaching out to people. Incredible, incredible networking tool. And thirdly, these platforms have allowed me to listen in and learn and learn from people who have the answers to the questions I'm looking for. So it's, a lot of that has been podcast content that I've consumed or YouTube stuff. When it's anything that I'm interested in, I can find somebody that's talking about it or that is a quote unquote, you know, um, expert in that world. And I can learn from them for free. I can, podcasting is so beautiful because you can essentially at least in the interview style, you can sit in on conversations and listen to people talk that you never would have heard 10, 15 years ago. So it, it is no questions asked. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for these platforms. A lot of plus sides, a lot of good things have happened because of these net, these tools, tools, all these platforms are tools. And I wouldn't, and there's no doubt about it. I wouldn't be where I am today. But Social media has also gotten the best of me before as well. Three examples. Definitely have fallen for the comparison trap and wishing I had the lives of other people, whether they're driving that fire-ass Lambo, taking that PJ, got a dope podcast studio, maybe had a better beard, probably not the case. Pretty confident what I got. Uh, Maybe they had a podcast guest to somebody I've wanted to talk to. The list goes on. I have fallen for the comparison trap and I've allowed it to mentally throw me off course. Gotten much better, much more centered and focused on what I need to do and I don't let that stuff really get to me like I used to but I it took me time and it took repetition of telling myself, you got this, just stick to the plan baby, stick to the plan. You don't know what it's taken for somebody to get, you know, I'm seeing chapter 10 of somebody's life, I don't know what the last nine chapters it took to get there. I don't need to be in anyone else's shoes. I need to become the greatest version of myself. I'm not trying to be the next Joe Rogan. I'm trying to be the best Bobby Hogar as as possible. I want to be the best version of myself. So I've allowed myself to fall for the comparison trap. Secondly, I've definitely gotten sucked into platforms. And instead of using time to invest in myself and read and listen to podcasts or work on podcasts or you know look into other areas that I'm interested in or research anything, prepping for a podcast, I've definitely had it happen before where I'm allowing myself to consume too much content and it's this endless, you know, one Instagram post to the next story to the next story, one YouTube video gets recommended to the next one and it goes and goes and goes. So I've been in that domino effect where I'm just consuming and that I'm not allowing myself to step away and actually go do shit and get shit done for myself. So that's happened before. And I've also allowed myself to believe that the number of followers equals how successful somebody is. And that is so far from the truth. The amount of followers somebody has or subscribers or people that are subscribed to their email blast or whatever, numbers do not equate to happiness. Because I think we ultimately are just continuously chasing the next goal. So it's like, oh, if I had 10,000 followers, I'd be so happy. Get to 10,000, now I want 100. If I would only have 10,000 downloads, per month on my podcast, then I'd be successful. And then I get to 10,000, now I want 100. So I, I, I think I've, I've allowed myself to believe that numbers equal success, and it's just so far from the truth. 
obviously we all want to succeed and see numbers in any area of our life grow, whether it's money, whether it's number of cars we own, watches, freaking uh, t-shirts we own. I mean, I'm a minimalist. I'm a min- what what? I'm a minimalist now, so I don't need all of those things. But I think we sometimes think that more equals happiness slash success, and I really don't believe in that. So, how can we take advantage of social media platforms? How can we use these tools to benefit our lives? There's three pillars and how I think we can do that. Number one, share. Use these platforms as a vehicle to share your voice with the world. It is so incredibly powerful by sharing out your interests, your passions, current projects you're working on, things that you're trying to develop, um, maybe industries or jobs you're in search for. Telling the world what you're trying to do is really powerful or, or, or what you stand for because you're starting to build a a brand, I guess you could say. You're building a brand of who you are and what you represent to the world. And you don't know what other people might see of yours. You don't know how posting something out could actually benefit you. So I do believe to a certain extent, share the world, share with the world what you're trying to do because somebody out there will see it, might want to help you or have an opportunity that fits perfectly and they've been looking for somebody like you. So it can be awkward. It can be weird at first when you're like posting on your Facebook or your LinkedIn or you're sharing something really thoughtful on your Instagram for the first time. It could be weird. You can feel awkward, but you get comfortable with sharing with time. The more consistent you're sharing and posting, the easier it gets. And it does not matter if nobody's watching right now because they will with time. So don't worry about the number of engagements of how many people are liking your posts, how many people are listening to your podcast or watching your YouTube video or clicking into the website where you're, you just built your e-commerce website. Share, share, share. Continue to share and document your journey. It has helped me 10x in so many ways that I never would have imagined. But I, I from what I consumed in 2016 and through the years up until now, I learned how important it was to just document my journey and continuously share my thoughts with the world. I'm not an expert. I always just, I make that very clear. I'm not saying I have all the answers to the world. This is just my opinion and from my own experience. So example, how we can share and create and why we should use, how we can use tools of social media to our advantage by sharing. For example, if you're somebody that's interested, I met this person one time that was interested in wanting to be a sports broadcaster, met him through Uber. And I said, hey, uh, you ever thought about starting a podcast? And they said, no. And so I thought that was a great example of this person that was in college that wanted to be a broadcaster. And it's like, how how do you convince somebody who's hiring the broadcaster that you have the talent when you have no resume or experience maybe you do have experience maybe you have a resume and you, you've done announcing before but how do you actually have proof and can show them something that like you're not just somebody who says they want to do it you're actually somebody that's making opportunities happen so if i was this person what i said to them is if you're interested in sports broadcasting why not start a podcast now and talk about sports and start getting familiar start building your voice behind the mic and use that as leverage to get other opportunities Now, it doesn't, I'm not saying that uh, everybody needs to start a podcast, which I'm a big believer of. You should, no matter what areas or industries of interest you have. I think there's so much power in sharing it because even if if you're a nurse, there's probably nurses looking for nurse podcasts to learn about the newest things that are happening in the industry. Start the podcast, become the person. Maybe you are a chef and there's new recipes that are rolling out and everybody's trying to learn about them. How do they learn? They listen to that podcast and now you're the person in the chef industry. So I think it doesn't matter which industry you're trying to get into. I just think there's so much value in sharing with the world your own thoughts and your own uh, feelings about what's already happening in the world slash potentially creating an outlet for you to share within that world. Like I was saying, the the broadcaster starting his own podcast talk about it. But regardless, 
share with the world, use the tools to your advantage, whether it's Instagram, whether it's YouTube, whatever you're comfortable with, share, 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 show the world what you're trying to do. There's value to it. Somebody's going to see it. You have to trust it. Even if people aren't engaging in the post, know that it's going to work to your favor in some time. It's worked to mine. Um, I share both, for example, I share both personal con- pod content like this stuff. And I also share the podcast meaty buying stuff that I do with Liquid IV. I share both. I try to show people what I'm doing for my career and just what I represent to the world. I'm trying to be, I guess you could say, a podcast expert from both the meaty buying side, which has been really insightful to learn working with Liquid IV, and then also from the creative side of being a host. And what's happened for me doing this, especially like LinkedIn, for example, I think people know me for my pod content, personal stuff. So that will always be, you know, continuously, I think, growing. But then even recently share, starting to share some of the media buying that I do with Liquid IV on LinkedIn. And now I'm getting media buyers adding me. And they're almost like, I would imagine potentially looking at me as a person that they can learn from, which I think is cool. So I can share my voice and continue to build my brand while sharing out the great stuff that we have happening for Liquid IV. So I think it's really, really important to share anything and everything about the industry or things that you're interested in because you don't know how it could help you or how somebody that sees it could help you. Secondly, learn. Second advantage of these social media platforms, learn. See creators and platforms that offer insight on something you are interested in doing or learning more about. I'll tell you right now from my own experience, all the answers are out there. Any question that you have, the answers are out there. Find YouTubers, podcasters, bloggers, platforms that produce content around the things that you are interested in. If you're somebody that has no patience and you just don't want to do the work, you might be that person that buys a course. And I'm not going to sit here and defend online courses it can actually be beneficial. I've never really taken that, taken one, um, but I know it's helped people. But do you need to buy a course in order to be, in order to learn something? No. If you're trying to speed up and learn sh- and learn very quickly and efficiently, which you know I I could argue that makes sense as well, depending on who you are and your situation and what, why you're trying to learn that subject, then yes, you can you can do that. But at the end of the day. If you have zero dollars and you have access to the internet, you can learn everything you want online. So, if, for example, if you're somebody that is interested in building cars, find YouTubers and podcasters that build content around building cars. It's out there. And sit there and soak it all in and learn as much as you can and listen and listen and listen. I've learned so much in the last couple of years just by listening to podcasts and by watching YouTube videos. To YouTube University, shout out to you and shout out to Podcast University. No d- disrespect to the college that I went to. Had a great four-year ride. Had a great time and experience and it helped me shape me to who I am today. No regrets. Would never change anything about it. But a lot of the things that I've learned and I needed to learn in what I do now, and whether it's podcasting and marketing or building content, was one, two steps. One, going out there and learning and trying to understand how to get it done. And then by two, actually going out there and doing the work. So, for my personal example, and sorry that I keep saying so, it just buys me time to breathe and think about what the hell I'm talking about. For example, I follow people like Lewis Howes, Jay Shetty, Gary Vee, Joe Rogan, and I take tools from their tool belt and I incorporate them into mine because these are podcasters, these are content creators, and these are people that are doing it at a high level that I want to do it at at some point. A lot of creativity is, is, is pulling in inspiration from other people that inspire us, putting it into our own little content recipe, stirring it up and creating. So a lot of my content, even something like this today, I'm pulling from, I I can't directly say like this solo pod is inspired by podcasters like blank, but this is 
This is a product of what all the podcasters and content creators that I consume and all my past experience, that's how I got to doing something like this solo pod. So those people I look to to learn from for business and podcasting wise. And then I also follow people like Nick Bear, a recent guy I found on YouTube who I've talked about in recent pods. I follow him for running tips and tactics because he puts out great content and I, I seek him for advice. And it's been extremely helpful and it's allowed me to become a better runner and I've learned things that have helped me develop into a better runner. So all that to say, use these tools to learn. There's, there's, I guarantee it, there's somebody out there doing what you want to do at a massive scale and producing content around it. Find them. Learn from them. Listen to them. I'm not saying they have all the answers and do exactly what they say, but hear their perspective and then and then you make the call of whether you want to believe in that or not or if you want to fall through and, and, and put that tool into your tool belt. Tool belt. So listen and learn from the people out there that are doing it because all the answers are out there. If you want to take the time and learn by yourself, do it. If you want to buy a course, that's totally up to you. Um, but at the end of the day, the answers are out there for free. You just have to be willing to do the research and find it. Third and final pillar of how we can take advantage of social media platforms would be network. Network, network, network. I had somebody slide through it. I posted a story earlier about, I was doing a podcast tonight about social media. Are there any, any things you guys wanted me to cover? And this was something I was already covering. So I forget who wanted to, I think his, his name was Daniel. Um, but use these tools as networking opportunities. Never before could we directly potentially reach out and have access to somebody that we are interested in talking to or working with or working for. LeBron James, example. I could send him a DM right now. Very, 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 very slim chance he sees it or reads it, but there still is a chance that he could because I'm sending it directly to him. Go back to, you know, this is the Larry Bird episode 33, when he was balling out, you know, Celtics legend for those who don't know. Back in that era, you, it, it, there was no, there was no slim chance of you getting in contact with him other than if you ran into him or you found a way to get directly in contact with maybe his agent, which, which then you'd have to rely on them to even pass that message along. We're living in a time now where you have a chance and you can you can reach out to people through these social media platforms. And whether they read it or not, you don't know, but you still have a chance. And I think that is incredibly powerful. So slide through DMs, send cold emails, hit people up via LinkedIn and shoot your shot. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Some people may never respond, but that's okay. You still took a shot, you still showed up, and you reached out to somebody that you're interested in talking to for whatever reason. Use these tools to your advantage. Once again, you got nothing to lose and everything to gain by reaching out to the people who inspire you or the people that you're looking to connect with. And it's just incredible. Like We didn't have these platforms before that allow us to now have that chance of actually reaching out to them. And one one uh one way I like to look at, you know, networking and reaching out to people. I don't know how I pulled this out of my ass. About a year ago, I did a, a podcast on my old show Purpose in the Youth called The Social Media Diet. I think that's the one I talked about it or maybe it was another networking solo pod. Anywho, I try to convince myself to believe that if somebody doesn't respond to me, maybe they read it and then it wasn't the best time for them to respond. So maybe, maybe theoretically, they were stepping onto a plane. They saw my message come inbound. Bob A wants to send you a message or Bob A sent you an email. The beard man wants to connect. What's up? Let's make this happen. Whatever. Maybe they were stepping on that plane. They go, in their mind, they go, 100% connecting with this guy. But I'm about to get on this plane. I'm going to hit him up when I land. So they put their phone in their pocket. They sit down strap up that seatbelt, they get nice and snug, maybe get a water, maybe some pretzels. 
They take off, take a little snooze. They land two hours later. Now they got to get their baggage. Now they get into the Uber. Now they're at the hotel. Now somebody's giving, you know, the phone call about business. And all of a sudden, that message that they were going to respond to is now passed because they were getting on the plane. There was a, a delay. Obviously, you know, maybe they didn't buy the Wi Fi package, whatever. So I try to tell myself that that's maybe somebody didn't respond to me when I reached out to them originally. And so I always believe in a follow-up. At least one follow-up is a given. I think one week minimum is the length. Um, unless it's something urgent and there's obviously there's it has there's got to be more context to what the situation is. But if it's a cold reach out or email, phone, whatever, I would say one week minimum. I think two days, you know, two days later, hey, it's Friday. I sent you an email on Wednesday. Did you get a chance to check it out? You got to understand people are busy. One week is respectable. And that's when I would follow up. I always follow up. Um, so let's, let me give an example. Hopefully these examples are somewhat helpful for people out there listening. If you're somebody that's interested in working for a company like Spotify and you want to work in their podcast department, maybe you're, you're just interested in working in podcast space, you love it, and there's just so many layers of the, obviously, podcasting, but say you want to work for Spotify, you want to work in their podcast department. If I was this person, I would be going on LinkedIn, I would type in Spotify, you know, the title that you're looking for, find people via LinkedIn, because it, it provides that the information, which is incredible, LinkedIn is an incredible tool, social network tool, that you can find the people that are in the role that you're doing or that work with that role or have some knowledge of just working in that Spotify podcast department and start hitting them up. Hey, Johnny, my name's blank. Really interested in working for Spotify in the podcast space. Was wondering if there's any value I can bring to the team. Here's my resume. Let me know. Send that to everybody on the Spotify team. Somebody's going to, somebody's going to respond. And if not, you keep sending it and you keep following up and you keep pushing for what you want. So then that's an example of how maybe there is no job listing on the careers part of Spotify.com. So go out there and try to find it. I don't think every job or company out there always puts their job on the website because Maybe they just look to directly within their network to see if they can find somebody. So even if you're not trying to get into the Spotify department, whatever your interests are, whoever you're trying to work for, attack it from a similar approach. Use social media for as a tool and try to find ways to connect to the people that have some role or capacity in the thing that you're trying to do and be straight and be a straight shooter with them. Shoot the shot though. Only way it's ever going to happen is if you shoot the shot. Great example for me. When I'm looking for podcast guests and I find somebody, I slide through DMs all day long, all day long. I've done cold emails before, but most of the time it's through Instagram DM and It's just about how you communicate with people and you got to be a straight shooter. You got to be very professional. You got to be very calculative of every word that you send somebody. Don't send them a five paragraph essay on that first DM email message. Keep it super short, brief and to the point and let them communicate back to you and then provide more context. If they ask, can you, you know, give me some more detail about what this is and then send them a couple paragraphs. But I don't think that initial DM or reach out needs to have five paragraphs. I think it just needs to get somebody's attention and get them to want to, res- and get the- and you need to get them to respond. So once again, three advantages of social media. We can share our voice with the world through it, which is helping us build our personal brand, regardless of what you're trying to do. Become a personal brand in that industry of whatever you're interested in. Number two, we can use these platforms to learn, seek the creators that are producing content around the things that you want to learn more about or the areas you want to get 
you know, more knowledgeable about. The answers are out there. You don't need to buy a course. All the answers are out there for free. And thirdly, use social platforms as a networking tool and reach out to people and shoot your shot and slide through DMs and send cold emails. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Use social media to your advantage. Now, before we go into not letting social media take over our lives, I'm going to take a quick sip of this water. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll tell you right now, said it once, said it many times. Water is just so good. Really good. Okay. Here we go. How to not let social media platforms take over our lives. Number one, do not check social media when you wake up. Don't do it. Fun fact about the bearded man, at least during like Monday through Friday when I'm in my like groove and I'm working and hustling, weekends I kind of let up and I kind of allow myself to have more flexibility and a little bit more less structure to my weekends. Still getting shit done though. You know how that go. You know how that go. Shout out to Drake. Uh, do not check social media when you first wake up. Fun fact about me, I do not check social media for the first three hours of my day. Yes, I said it. I know most of you won't believe it, but for the first three hours of my day, I do not check social media, and it's an absolute game changer. If you see my Instagram posts, I'm all about you win the morning, you win the day, and what that means, I'm all about using the first couple hours of my day to myself, where I work out, get my fitness in, I meditate, I get my breakfast in, and then I turn on social media and I start my day. So I would say, be very aware of how quickly do you wake up and, and grab your phone and check social media? I think that can hurt us. I think we need to give some space from social media in our brains to allow us to just think in our thoughts. And so I think creating that space, especially first thing in the morning, do it. You just want to focus on yourself. You want to win your morning, however that might be, reading, working out, listening to podcasts, paint, meditate, whatever tickles your fancy, do that in the morning. Don't check social media. There's always going to be more media to con- to consume. There's always going to be breaking news. There's going to be things on there that you don't need to see right in the morning. Just give yourself that gap. I think it's really, really important. Do not check social media when you first wake up. If you're somebody that does, start with the first 30 minutes. Once you get that down, then go to 60 minutes. Once you get that down, push farther and farther and farther until you feel like you're at a comfortable spot. Ladies and gentlemen, first three hours of my day, I don't check social media. And I love it makes me feel good so that when I do check social media, I've been, I'm woke. I've already had my workout, I'm freaking ready for the day. I've had some breakfast. I'm ready to roll, baby. Secondly, do not fall for the comparison trap. Social media equals people's highlight reel. They only want to show the good shit. You know what I call that? Bullshit. Show me everything. And if they're not showing you everything, then don't fall for it. Very easy to see somebody and all they post is that highlight reel, and we th- and we see them are like, man, we wish we could have their lives, or they look so happy. Let's be honest for a second. We've all had our great days, and we've all had our bad days. People, we're all human. We all have these highs and, and, and these lows. So understand that a picture is a split second of someone's lives. One split second, snap of fingers, boom, that pic. That picture could have stopped and they could have had a frown on their face right after that. Or they could have, you don't know what's going through their mind, essentially. You don't know if they're actually happy or what's what they deal with on a day-to-day. So do not fall for the comparison trap, like I was saying earlier. Of, uh, Well, I was saying a lot earlier, I guess. <laughs> um, like for me, I, I don't allow other podcasters' success and wins hold me down or make me feel like shit. Because I'm comparing like, oh, they have, you know, 1 million monthly listeners and I only have 10,000. You know, I don't let that hold me back. I go, wow, there's somebody that has a million plus. That means that if they're doing it, I could do that. So I think if anything, let other people's success and wins fire you up, inspire you, but do not let that shit hold you back. And that's what it's all about. Don't fall for the comparison trap. Allow other people's success to inspire you, but also understand that, People's highlight reels, its uh, you don't know what's actually happening underneath the hood. Thirdly, 
Be aware of what you are consuming. Super important. I know Instagram rolled out that mute button on Instagram IG where you can mute people's stories or uh, their actual feed posts. I got a better one. Just unfollow them. Unfollow them. We need to be super aware of what we're consuming on a daily basis. That The content that we consume on a daily basis is actually programming our mind for how we see the world. Okay? So if there's somebody's page or content that you're con- continuously seeing that's just not benefiting your life, get it out of here. If it's not inspiring you, if it's not uh, something, you know, you, you like to learn from whatever that platform might be. If it isn't bringing you, you know, laughter in your life or love or just it's not you just you there's you've been there. Don't tell me you haven't. When you you see somebody somebody's posting your feed and you ask yourself, "Why am I following this person?" And you might be following them because they're your friend or you know, there's somebody you want to connect with one day or insert any excuse. If you aren't actually enjoying seeing them in your feed, You have my permission to unfollow them. Don't mute them. Just unfollow them. Get that shit out of here. What we're seeing in our timelines on a daily basis is programming the way we think and the way we see the world. And if it's not helping you, get it out of here because there's too much bullshit online that if it's not benefiting you, get it out of here. So be aware of what you are consuming. Um, It's the social media diet. That's that that was the podcast that I recorded previously. Feed yourself the good stuff, cut out all the bad stuff. Just like food. You give yourself good food, you feel good about yourself. Give yourself bad food, off those, you know, I'm all about the cheat day. You know, you gotta have a cheat day every so often. Have a cheat day. But also look at that in social media. If you're feeding yourself good stuff, it's gonna benefit you. It's gonna make you feel good. It's gonna inspire you. It's gonna give you motivation. But if you're Consuming stuff that just isn't positively helping you, get it out of here ASAP. Fourth, check pl- check platforms less than more. Check platforms less than more. Instead of constantly refreshing that feed over and over, use that time to invest in you. It's a lot of bullshit online. A lot of stuff that we don't need to stay up to speed with at all times. Go in, check what you need to check, get out of there. If you need to build structure or you need to put in like actual time, like gaps, then tell yourself, I'm looking to check social media at these parts of the day for X amount of minutes and really build out a schedule if it's really, if social media is hurting you, if you're consuming too much, like TikTok, my God, that is a, that platform is built to literally keep people's attention there at all times. If you're just constantly going to the next video over and over and over again, and then six, you know, six hours goes by and you're like, wow, I was supposed to do blank and I didn't do it. Consume platforms less than more. Just be aware of how long you are actually on these platforms. If you need to, put social media platforms into a certain folder on your phone and move it around. Put it to that very last page so you don't have like that that reaction to click it on 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 the first on your first page or build out that schedule or I think there's literally apps now that will lock out platforms if you need to do so. If you need to do it, do it. Check platforms less than more. It gives you more time to invest in yourself, read books, listen to podcasts, work on your own craft, reach out to, you know, people that you've been wanting to talk to they haven't talked in a while just do just consume less than more and of course there's always those exceptions right those weekends I, like i said i have exceptions where i allow myself to you know maybe consume more content than, than not but i'm very aware when i'm like wait a second i've been I'm, i've been on this platform for like 10 minutes and i can see myself just keep going like stop right now bob put the phone down get back to work and then lastly this kind of goes off of what i was saying earlier about sharing your voice with the world post more than consume if you're going to use social media platforms to share out, post more than you consume. Find that balance. If you are a creator and you share your voice, keep posting. You probably see me post a lot and it might seem like, well, you talk about not using social media platforms, but you're always posting, bearded man. How is that possible? 
It's because I'm very aware of that. I click into these platforms, I post what I need to post, and I get out of there. I do this very often, more often than people probably realize. I don't allow myself, I try, but it happens. I try not to allow myself to get into this this constant scrolling the feed, clicking through people's Instagram stories, checking up on what everyone's doing. Try not to fall for that trap because it's very easy to do so. So if you are somebody that creates and shares your voice with the world, post, 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 consume. Post, 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 consume. Keep sharing your voice with the world. It's important. Keep posting and sharing out whatever you have that you're trying to create and or sh- at least spread around, but just be aware of how much you're actually consuming. So how do we not let social media platforms take over our lives? Do not check social media when you first wake up. Build out some amount of time that allows you to actually wake up and jumpstart your day and get the ball rolling before you start diving into the apps. Secondly, don't fall for the comparison trap. What you see on people's Instagrams and social medias, it is a highlight reel. Let their success inspire you, but do not let it hold you back from actually doing the thing that you want to do. If they have a lifestyle that you want, let them be the example that it's possible. So let that inspire you. Thirdly, be aware of what you're consuming. If what you're seeing in your feed is not helping you, benefiting you, and you're questioning yourself, why am I actually following this person? Unfollow them. Don't mute their story feed or story posts or feed posts. Just unfollow them. Get it out of here. Social media is a diet. Feed, feed yourself the good stuff. Get out all the bad stuff. Fourth, check platforms less than more. Be very aware of how often you're going into your Instagram, onto your TikTok, onto YouTube. Be very aware of how much you're actually consuming. Less is better than more because we need to spend that more that extra time investing in ourselves reading books listening to podcasts you know doing stuff that actually benefit our lives and then lastly post more than you consume if you're a creator if you're sharing your voice with the world post 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 consume post 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 consume be very aware of what you're actually consuming on there two questions from the bm tbmc the beard man community uh trex braun said favorite and least favorite thing about social media Favorite would be the opportunities that it provides to the world. Like I I said earlier in this podcast, look at social media and these platforms as like your own network, MTV, CBS. These were all platforms that you should just be on TV. You can now create your own network on social, uh, on social media platforms. So do that, You, you know, or not do that, but like, that's the opportunity we can create our whatever. I mean, there's e-commerce sites that you can build today. You can start selling a product or service. So I love the opportunities that social media provides. I'd say the least favorite thing I have about it would be people that use it for the wrong reasons and they just troll other people for, you know, trying to do something bigger than themselves. So I'd say the people that are using it for the wrong reasons bother me, but I think the opportunities for sure way more than, you know, the bad people out there that are using it for the wrong reasons. And then shout out to my fellow bearded brother, Jordan Tarver. He, he left a topic um, and he said social distance from social media. And I love that. Shout out to you, Jordan. I think that what it comes down to is take breaks from social media when you need it. I'm not here to tell you guys and gals that, you know, there's only one way to consume social media. And if you're not doing this way, you're not successful. Or I don't freaking know. Take breaks when you need it. If social media gets you anxious, worked up, falling for the comparison trap. Step away. Be very aware of how you're feeling and how these platforms are making you feel. And if it's not good, get out of there. If the stove is hot and you put your hand on there, you're going to pull it off. Just like social media platforms, if you're not feeling good from consuming, get out of there. So social distance yourself from social media platforms when you need it. Take a break when you need it. It's good for you. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We just dived into this podcast of social media, how to use social media to our advantage and how to not let it take over our lives. I, I hope it was valuable. I hope somebody made it this far. If you made it this far, woo-hoo-hoo, baby, that feels good. Uh, as you know, all that I ask, please share out this podcast to the world. Screenshot this episode, post it to your IG story, tag me at Bob A, B-O, three B's, four A's, and a Y. That is how we grow this podcast from the ground up, ladies and gentlemen. 
All you out there that share it out and post about it, it fires me up. Every time I see it, I go, let's go. People at restaurants and people in public are like, who the hell is this bearded guy screaming? And I go, let's go. So every time you post that story out, just know I'm going, let's go. So keep sharing it out. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Screenshot it, post it in your IG story. Tag me, at Bobby, B-O, three B's, four A's, and a Y. That is it. What a beautiful Monday. What an incredible day. Back for the fourth quarter, 25 days of no booze to come. And everything's going great. More content on the way. More bearded wisdom on the way. Thank you guys and gals for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, night. Whatever you're doing, just do it great. And if you have any suggestions, hit me up. I'm always looking to continue to build out this podcast content. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you guys and gals soon enough. See ya.